Okay, welcome back. This is Cash Welfare Program's application for the optimal consumption bundle choice of an individual. That was a mouthful of a description, but this is one of the most exciting parts of this chapter because we are actually going to talk about some cash welfare programs in the United States. Let's get started. All right. So let's put the tools to work. All right, so temporary assistance to needy families, okay? And labor supply among single mothers. So we are now going to talk about labor supply. So this is a cash welfare assistance program for poor, mainly single mothers, okay? So back in the days, for example, in New Mexico, family of three, so this is mother and two children, they get $389 per month. That's not a lot of money. However, it's something, right? It could cover the food costs, so on and so forth. All right. So we are going to have two goods in the utility maximization problem. These goods are going to be leisure. Leisure is the number of free hours you have and food consumption. So two good goods, okay? Time not devoted to leisure will be spent working and earning money in this model, okay? So you're working and earning money unless you are uh, enjoying your leisure, enjoying your time with your children, okay? So this person can work up to 2,000 hours per year at the wage of $10 per hour. So this person's wage rate is $10, so 2,000 times 10, this person can actually make $20,000 per year. And temporary assistance to needy families, I'm going to start calling this 10th, is not yet in place, okay? So price of food is $1 per unit. So if this person works full-time, right, 20, uh, it makes $20,000, this person can buy 20,000 units of food. The... Therefore, the price of one hour of leisure is the hourly wage rate. So the price of food is $1. Price of one hour of leisure, that means every hour I'm not working, right? I am actually losing $10. All right. So there's a direct trade-off between leisure and food. Each working hour brings 10 units of food. All right. So if we, right... If we de uh, draw this in a graph, we're going to assume leisure is good. That means the more leisure we have, the happier we are. Of course it is for more people, unless you're an extreme workaholic. Even workaholics hit a ceiling, right? Leisure is a good good and labor is bad in the sense that you don't get happiness for like... It, imagine this, right? You are... Watching Netflix, your favorite TV series versus working. So most people would prefer relaxing and watching Netflix series. However, right now it's work time actually. It's 3.23 p.m. I'm recording this. I could be, let's say, watching Netflix, but I don't do that. Why? Because this is my work hour. I keep consistency. I'm just digressing a little bit. And every work hour, this person is not working. She is losing $10. And if I don't work, I'm also going to be, even though I'm sorry, I'm going to work because I'm going to fall behind. So, yes, I prefer leisure, right? I prefer binging on my favorite TV series. But if work is waiting for me, I'm going to have to do that first. Okay, so leisure is a good, good, right? Just as movies were, so more is preferred to less. So this is leisure hours. So this person can have zero leisure hours, that means worked all this time. Or this person can take all the leisure hours. So this mom is not working, ouch, okay? Food is a more typical good, right? This is quantity of food. You can consume zero. If you didn't work, you're going to consume. We're going to get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. So if, if this person, let's, cons uh, this, let's construct her budget constraint, right? So just use your logic. If this person works 2,000 hours, right? So hours of work, I'm going to call this 2,000. And leisure, I'm going to uh, say that hours of work plus leisure 
needs to be equal to 2000 you have 2000 hours available for that's your total time available for leisure work if you work 2000 hours your leisure is zero okay and then each hour brought you ten dollars so you can actually consume boom you can actually consume twenty thousand dollar worth of food okay so that's one extreme light right leisure is zero we are here leisure is zero you work two thousand hours times ten twenty thousand so this is one point on your budget constraint another extreme is actually your leisure is two thousand nice your leisure is two thousand <laughs> it's not nice i'm just saying like nice bravo your hours of work is zero so your quantity of food consumption is going to be, right, hours worked times, this is supposed to be an equal sign, very ugly equal sign, hours of work times wage rate. So you work zero hours, I'm sorry, and your wage rate is $10. 10 times zero, it's zero. So if your leisure is 2000 right your food consumption will be zero you're going to not feed your family all right so you connect these points this leads to the kind of budget constraint we have seen previously okay okay we have seen this before that's great uh let's move on to so what's the bu slope of this budget constraint let's figure it out Slope will be the price of leisure, negative price of leisure divided by price of food, okay? So what's the price of leisure? Price of leisure is always the wage rate. So it's negative $10 divided by price of food was $1. So negative 10 is your, is your slope. Thus, there are various combinations of leisure and food consumption. You can, for instance, look, consume 1,000 hours of leisure, work 1,000 hours. 1,000 times 10, you can consume $10,000 worth of food. Or you can consume 500 hours of leisure, 1,500 hours of work. 1,500 times 10 is 15,000. We already considered the extreme. Let's also consider this one. You took 1,500 hours of leisure out of 2,000. 2,000 minus 1,500. 500 hours of work will get you food worth of 5,000 units. Okay. So, again, this is what we <laughs> just talked about. 500 hours of leisure, 15,000 units of food okay 1000 hours of leisure 1000 hours of work 10000 units of food because 1000 hours of work times 10 is 10000 and this is what we talked about again 15 or 100 hours of leisure this is 500 hours of work times 10 right 5000 units of food sorry for repetition okay temper resistance in needy families has two key features Number one, there's something called benefit guarantee. This is G dollar a month that a recipient with zero earnings gets. So a government gives you certain amount fixed if you make no money in the market. There's also something called benefit reduction rate J, rate at which the benefit guarantee falls as earnings increases. For instance, you are a single mom let's say with a ceo salary this single mom of three children she has annual income of five hundred seventy thousand dollars. government is not going to government is not going to give this person a temporary assistance to needy family because this family is not needy doesn't make sense so assume that Government gives you benefit guarantee of five thousand dollars per year this is if you have worked zero hours right and with each dollar you make in the market this five thousand dollars will go down so with each hour worked with each hour of work right you're going to w you're going to make ten dollars of salary guess what this g will be reduced by 50 this 
by the 50% of what you made. Let's say you made $10. Your collection of this 5,000, remember, it will be reduced to $4,995 only. That's it. Okay. In English, translation time, if you don't work at all, you get $5,000. When you start working, each dollar you make, you're going to lose 50 cents of that $5,000, okay? So let's see what it does to my budget line. This was the temper, uh, this is the budget constraint, budget line before the temp. Okay, so what happens is that I'm going to use a different color. I don't like red. It's going to get confusing. Okay, so this is a benefit guarantee, $5,000. I'm going to put G here, G. 5,000. 5,000 guarantee means that a recipient could now consume 2,000 hours of leisure and $5,000 worth of food, right? 5,000 units of food, okay? Interesting. So his or her budget line jumps, her budget line, because it's a single mom, her budget line jumps here, okay? Forget about this, this sign. This is, this needs to be this like a dashed line all right so it starts from g and it's going to look this budget line how am i going to connect this to this budget line am i going to go straight nope okay so let's figure that out let's raise these okay so the benefit guarantee of 50 percent reduces the guarantee as earnings increase so the not this is not green this is pink i change the color of everything <laughs> because i like pink and i refuse to have ugly colors like green no offense okay i'm being funny this pink area represents the new bundles from temporary assistance to needy families okay so now budget line becomes this kinked budget line starts from g goes all the way here and then returns back to the original budget line. That means a mother who actually makes more than $10,000 earnings loses all benefits, okay? So at 1,000 hours of work, temporary assistance to needed families' benefits fall to zero, okay? So slope in this section, slope in this section is 10. This section is 10. The regular budget, remember the initial budget line slope was 10. So slope here is 10, negative 10. When I kept saying 10, it's an absolute value. Slope in this section is negative 5. Why? Every hour you work, you make $10, right? No, you don't. Benefits are reduced by half. Your actual your real wage is $5. Okay? So budget line becomes flatter. So possible policy experiment to reduce G. But before we get to that, I'm going to show you a couple of things, how we get this budget line. First of all, we understand, right, how new budget line starts here. So $5,000. So you're getting G equals $5,000, right? Okay. And benefit reduction rate is J 50%, okay? 0.5. So let's learn how to calculate these kink points in this new budget line. If I make, in English, right, if I make $1 in the market earning money, I'm going to lose 50 cents from my benefit guarantee, okay? So how many dollars should I make in market by working to lose all this $5,000, okay? So what you're going to do, we are going to use something called direct proportions we learned in middle school. So we're going to multiply, cross multiply, one times negative 5,000. Forget about negatives now. That's the lost amount anyways. One times 5,000, one times 5,000, okay, equals 0.5x. So I'm going to, we're cross multiplying x times 0.5. I'm going to divide everything by 0.5. 0.5 x is going to be 10,000. So if I make 10,000 dollars 
working as a single mom, I'm going to lose all my benefits. How many hours should I make? Uh, should I work to lose this ten thousand dollars if my hourly wage is ten dollars? My hourly wage is ten dollars. Therefore, my hours of work needs to be one thousand ten thousand divided by ten. One thousand hours worked, or one thousand hours of beyond one thousand hours of leisure, I'm going to you lose all my benefits. So I'm going to revert back to my regular budget line, right? At this point, kink point, and the slope of this guy is 0.5. Okay, this is really important to know, folks. You need to know how to calculate this, and there are some examples in the new homework. Okay, so possible policy experiment is to reduce G. What happens? The benefit guarantee falls from 5,000 to 3,000, holding all parameters constant. So initial point... Right, endowment point will go down from 5,000 to 3,000. And budget line is actually going to, this is going to be now 6,000. I calculated it before. And this will be 6,400, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. This is going to be 1,400 hours, not 14,000. 1,400 14, hours of leisure okay so the kink so a couple of important things figuring out the slope of this part and knowing where the kink happens and also showing this uh showing this endowment point so your new budget line is this purple one right i'm just going to draw the whole thing it just needs to go rather do, 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 do. Okay, so earnings level where the tenth ends falls from ten thousand to six thousand. Okay, and what happens is that we're going to see some changes, and we're going to evaluate that in next part. This is the episode two of tenth, and we're going to learn all about that in next part. I'll see you then. Bye.